أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم And then Allah says in ayah number 9 وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيئَ إِلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ فَإِنْ فَاءَتْ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْ وَأَقْسِطُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ Allah says, if two groups among the believers fall into fighting, make peace between them. If one of them aggresses against the other, fight those who aggress until they return to God's command. And if they return, make peace between them with justice and act equitably. Truly God loves the just. Now this ayah is one of the most important verses in Surah Al-Hujurat because it speaks about the basic principles for dealing with disputes between Muslims. Conflict is, is inevitable. And you find that in Medina, you know, it's interesting that in, in Mecca, there is very little talk about internal conflict. Because, you know, when you're persecuted, you naturally set your differences aside, you know. You know, being persecuted has a very unique way of bringing people together. You know, when we're in crisis mode, we put our differences aside because it's about survival. In Mecca, because the period of persecution has ended, people have a lot more free time, people feel a lot safer, and there, therefore you find that conflict begins to arise in the community. Now, what is this ayah saying? One of there were two major tribes in in Medina, the tribes of Al Aws and Khazraj. There was a fight that broke out. You know, so so Muslims were fighting with each other even during the time of the Prophet. This is not something that is new. So during the time of the Prophet, there was, a, there was a disagreement between these two tribes. It began as a verbal conflict. In, insults were being exchanged. They had a disagreement. It escalated into verbal insults. And then it escalated even further into physical fighting. They were physically attacking each other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals this verse. وَإِن طَائِفَتَانْ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينِ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا Now, there's an important lesson for us in this verse. And the, the lesson is how to deal with conflict. During the time of the Prophet, there were two tribes. Today, it could be two mosques two communities, two organizations. They're fighting with one another. What is our responsibility? Unfortunately, when there is conflict in our community, very rarely do you see peacemakers. You, f you find people joining sides, fanning the flames of discord. But what does Allah say? How are we supposed to deal with conflict when it happens among Muslims. You know, unfortunately, especially today, I've seen many communities, they get into fights with each other, there's no islah, this, they take each other to court. They hire non-Muslim lawyers, they make non-Muslim lawyers rich, and they drag each other to court. And believe me, no one wins except their lawyers. What are you supposed to do when there's conflict? Allah says, فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَهُمَا Try to make peace. Don't be biased. Try to make peace. Try to put out the flames. Listen to both sides of the story. Bring the hearts together. 
فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى However, if one refuses to make peace, فَقَاتِلُ الَّتِي تَبْغِ حَتَّى تَفِيءَ إِلَىٰ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ if there's one that is clearly aggressing, fight against those who are aggressing, who are being antagonistic. And fight here doesn't mean that you take out your weapons, meaning try to put an end to the aggression. <laughs> Oppose them. Try to put out the flames. Try to stop them from aggressing until they return to God's command. Returning to God's command means what? Returning to civility. Coming back to coming back to the boundaries of the Sharia, not crossing the limits. If they stop, make peace. Don't hold grudges. The problem with us, my dear brothers and sisters, when we have fights with each other, we we might we might forgive. But we don't forget. We hold grudges. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Allah here is talking about in this context, these are Muslims who are actually fighting each other. They were shedding each other's blood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you have to make peace, you have to let it go. You have to let it go. How can you make peace? Allah says, peace can only be established if it's based on justice. In the Islamic tradition, you know, many people, they have the slogan that Islam is a religion of peace. I say, no, that's not accurate. Islam is a religion of justice. You know, if you look at what's happening in, in Palestine, you know, for example, Israel is always talking about oh, peace. You know, they, we want to make peace. You can't talk about peace if you've confiscated people's lands. You can't talk about peace if you've occupied people's country. If you're building settlements on land that doesn't belong to you, there's no peace. Before there is peace, there has to be justice. Make peace based on justice and equity. Inna Allaha yuhibbul muqsateen. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, there is, there is a need for peacemakers in our community. Unfortunately, we have too many people who exacerbate the problems, who add fuel to the fire. When you see two individuals fighting, when you see two organizations at each other's throats, try to be the one who brings the hearts together. Make an effort, even if you're not able to Reconcile, at least make an effort to reconcile. And if you cannot reconcile, stay out of it. Don't get involved. If you're only going to fan the flames of conflict and division. And this is one of, this, this is one of the things Amir al muminin mentions on his deathbed. Amir al muminin alayhi salam, when he was on his deathbed, the Imam could have spoken about, he could have spoken about anything. You know, when you're on your deathbed, you choose your words very carefully because your time is limited. Imam Amir al muminin on his deathbed, he says to his children, فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ جَدَّكُمَا He addresses Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein specifically, directly. And he addresses all of us. He says to Hassan and Hussein that I heard your grandfather, the messenger of God, saying, Salahu that il bain, afdalu min amet salati was siyam. Reconciling between two people who are fighting, who are not speaking to each other, who are on bad terms, two mosques who have blacklisted each other in our communities. If you go and you're able to organize a, a dinner between the boards of mosques that are, you know, that don't have a good relationship, you try to bring them together, you put out the fires, you try to reconcile. 
if you're able to get rid of this animosity, if you're able to bring unity, if you're able to bring people together and reconcile them, the Prophet says this is better than a year of mustahab prayers and a year of mustahab fasts. Can you imagine how much, how much effort, if you think about one year of recommended prayers, you, you pray Salatul Layl for one year, and you fast every single day out of the year, except the days where you're not permitted to fast, like the days of Eid. You fast throughout the year. That's a lot of, you, you, you put yourself through a lot of physical exhaustion. Imam Amir al muminin he says, if you're able to resolve a conflict, between two people who are fighting, this is more beloved to Allah than a year of recommended worship in the form of prayer and fasting. So you see, brothers and sisters, Allah in this verse is speaking about how Muslims should treat each other. That when there's fight, in the same way when, when you see family members fighting, your, your first reaction shouldn't be to take sides. Or to add fuel to the fire. It should be to kind of calm everything down because you see them as members of your family. That you try to make peace. But peace always has to be based on justice. If rights have been violated, those rights have to be restored. The wrongdoing has to be acknowledged. The peace has to be built on justice. In ayah number 10, Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَىٰ فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ The believers, ayah number 10, the believers are but brothers. So make peace between your brethren and be conscious of God. So perhaps you may receive mercy. This is one of the most, this is probably the highlight of Surah Al-Hujurat. This verse summarizes the way that we should look at each other, the, the, way should, the way that we should treat each other as Muslims. It's interesting that Allah doesn't say that the believers are friends. No, Allah says, no, mu'mineen are not just friends. That the relationship that binds one believer to another even if they live on the other side of the world, even if they've never met each other face to face. Allah says, no, you're not just friends. Allah says, the believers are brothers. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَىٰ That you're, you're closer to each other than even friends. You're not just friends. You're brethren, you're brothers. فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ Make peace. Now, brothers, you know, in, in the same way that siblings fight, Mu'mineen are going to fight, they're going to argue, they're going to disagree. But don't let these disagreements, don't let these conflicts break the bonds of brotherhood. You should always make peace with each other. Allah reminds you that make sure that this relationship that you have with one another, make sure that you're conscious of God when you deal with each other. So that you may receive mercy. If you want Allah to have mercy upon you, His mercy upon you is contingent upon how you treat others. Have mercy upon each other. So God will have mercy upon you. And there are many ahadith that speak about the relationship that Muslims should have with one another. The way that they per should perceive each other. There's a narration from there's a narration from the Prophet ﷺ where he says, "Al mu'minu mir'atun li akhihi mu'min." That believers, it's a very beautiful description. That believers are mirrors for one another. Now, what is the what is the function of a mirror? You know, you, you need a mirror, right? Especially if, if you want to leave your house and you want to go out into the world, you need a mirror. You cannot do without a mirror. Even 
Before they invented mirrors, people in the past, they used to look into the water. They wanted to see their reflection. It's important to have an accurate assessment of your appearance. And your brothers and sisters in faith are meant to be that for you. A mirror, it reflects your beauty. It amplifies your beauty. And it also reflects your blemishes. The mirror doesn't lie to you. You know, some of us probably wish the mirror was, was, uh, would lie to us. But the, the mirror is, mirrors don't lie. It gives you a very accurate reflection of yourself. And therefore, mu'mineen should not flatter each other. You should amplify. You should reflect the good in each other. Don't conceal the goodness in each other. But at the same time, don't exaggerate. Don't flatter each other. Mirrors also reveal blemishes. Mu'mineen are meant to be real with each other. That if I have shortcomings, you should, you should do what? You don't expose them, but you help me address those shortcomings. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, he says, أَحَبُّ إِخْوَانِي مَنْ أَهْدَى إِلَيِّ عُيُوبِي That the best of my brothers is the one who gifts me my shortcomings. Meaning they, they point out my mistakes, my shortcomings, my spiritual blemishes in a very polite way. Why do they do that? Because they care about my spiritual growth. They give me an accurate assessment of who I am. If they see that I make mistakes, they take me to the side and they, they give me advice. The Prophet ﷺ, when he speaks about how believers should interact, the Prophet says, The Prophet used to say to Muslims that smile when you see each other. You know, some of us, we need to get into the habit of smiling more. You know, sometimes you walk in the masjid, you walk in the masjid on a Tuesday and a Wednesday, and you think to yourself, is there a funeral today? Everybody looks miserable. Everybody looks, everybody's frowning. Why are people frowning? Rasulullah says, meet your brother with a smile on your face. You know, be pleasant. Smile, believe me, sometimes a smile can make people forget about their problems. People are looking for opportunities to feel joyful. So meet each other with faces that are smiling. Fulfill each other's needs. You know, we all have problems. We all need help. Imam al-Sadiq says, مَنْ قَضَى لِأَخِيهِ الْمُؤْمِنِ حَاجَةً قَضَى اللَّهُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِئَةَ أَلْفْ حَاجَةً if you know that someone, a fellow Muslim, has a problem, they need a job, they're having financial troubles, you know, they need some help finding a spouse, they need some advice, they need someone to talk to, they need someone to vent to. If you can, if you are able to lift the burden from them, if you're able to help them, if you're able to fulfill a need, resolve a problem, Imam al-Sadiq says, God will grant you 100,000 requests on the Day of Judgment. If you fulfill the need, if you grant the hajjah for one believer, Allah will grant you 100,000 hawa'ij on the Day of Judgment. And we'll conclude here. Imam Al-Baqir and Imam Al-Sadiq, they were in Mina, they were performing Hajj one year, and they were sitting with some of their companions, and a man passed by. They were in a tent, and there was a man that entered the tent, and then he left. One of the companions of Imam Al-Baqir, Imam Al-Sadiq, he pointed at the man and he told the Imam, Wallahi inni la uhibbu hadha rajul. 
the man says to Imam al-Sadiq and Imam al-Baqir that I love that man. I love that brother. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, he says, so Imam al-Sadiq was younger, is his son. Imam al-Baqir, he says to the man who was saying that this man who just walked into the tent, I love him very much. He's very dear to me. Imam says, أَلَا فَأَعْلِمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ أَبْقَى لِلْمَوَدَّةِ وَخَيْرٌ فِي الْأُلْفَةِ The Imam alayhi salam says, why don't you go tell him that you love him? Why do you just keep it inside your heart? If you love someone, if they are dear to you, tell them that they're dear to you. Express this love that you have for them. Express that you value them. Affirm your love for them through your words. And this is something that we need to learn. And you see the Ahlul Bayt salam, they encouraged their followers that if, if someone is dear to you, tell them that you're dear to me. May Allah bless you. I'm honored that, uh, that, that I have you among my friends and my companions. Give gifts to each other. Show that you love each other. So when that man pointed and said that this man is very beloved to me, Imam al-Baqarah says, go and tell him. Because if you tell him, it will increase the love that he has in his heart for you, and it will increase your love. And it will make your friendship even more lasting. You know, sometimes we underestimate how powerful our words can be. Sometimes if you say to someone, you see a brother at the mosque, a sister at the mosque, and you mention to them that I really admire you. You're very dear to me. I, I love your humility. You're a very thoughtful person. You're, I, I mention you in my dua. You know, sometimes, believe it or not, just these words of kindness can change a person's mood. And I would even go as far to say that there may be some people who are going through difficult times, and they may be, God forbid, having suicidal thoughts and a word of affection, a word of appreciation. Loving words, it could make all the difference. And I have, I have heard from people who've told me that, Sheikh, sometimes I go through periods where I feel that I, I'm going to end my life. And someone reaches out to me. Unknown, not, not even knowing that I'm going through a difficulty. They call me. They smile at me. They hug me. They tell me how much they appreciate me, and I, I decide not to take my life. So we shouldn't underestimate the, the power of our words, the power of expressing our love for each other as brothers and sisters. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us of those who practice this verse and implement the spirit of this verse, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى That the believers are not friends, they're brothers. They are as close to each other as siblings who come from the same mother. And this is why we refer to the, the global Muslim community as an ummah, which is from the word um, which means mother, which means that we're connected to each other in the same way that siblings are connected to each other because they come from the same mother. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless us and guide us and inspire our hearts with the teachings of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin. Thank you very much. Jazakum Allah. So we will. This will. This is. Uh, unfortunately, this is our last uh, session before the month of Ramadan, and we will uh, reconvene after uh, Eid. Inshallah, I think me and you, Zain, will determine uh, the exact date. Inshallah, in the upcoming weeks. Yes. And inshallah. Also, I wanted to pass on a comment. Uh, someone mentioned this: the the best resolution of the month of Ramadan is to follow the seer of Surah Hujarat, especially by Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, please keep me, uh, keep me in your dua. You know, it's, for me, you know, it's easy to share this, uh, this information, but I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to,
to give me the uh, the ability to implement. You know, what the, the real accomplishment is not to 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 share reflections on the Quran, but to but to take these reflections and translate them into into habits and make them part of our character. So I ask you, inshallah, to uh, make dua for me that I'm able to do that. Inshallah, and please pray for us as well. Inshallah.